It's about time. Good evening and thanks for watching the news on Times TV, TTV, with me Eric Insigiti, first the headlines. Public outcry as Public Appointments Committee of Parliament rejects Martha Chizuma's appointment as Anti-Corruption Bureau Director General. COVID misconceptions cost the life of a pregnant woman in Chigumula Township in Blantyre, and High Court reserves ruling on application to vacate an injunction restraining government from relocating refugees to Tzareka refugee camp. In Doha. We also have the latest in international news. Please do stay with us. In our first story, the Public Appointments Committee of Parliament on Tuesday rejected Martha Chizuma as the new Anti-Corruption Bureau ACB Director General. A total of 18 members of the or nine others scored in her favor. Taonga Sabola was at Parliament and now reports. Lawmakers who interviewed Chizuma told reporters after the session that it was shocking to see that some panelists gave Chizuma a 1 out of 25 in some of the six themes of the interview, which included qualification, professionalism, presentation, dressing, and others. Ironically, the same pack in October last year renewed Chizuma's contract as ombudsman on the basis of being highly qualified and professional. Lilongwe South lawmaker Peter Dimba told reporters that representatives of the Tonse Alliance in the committee tried to reason with chairperson of the committee, Joyce Chitulo, to go for a tiebreaker after the vote was tied at 9-9, but that the plea was turned down. In an interview on Tuesday, Park Chairperson Joyce Chitulo said Park had reached a decision on Chizuma. Yeah. And speaking soon after coming out of the interview room, Chizuma expressed confidence that she would pass the interview. Among others, Chizuma said she wanted to use ACB to make Malawians uncomfortable with corruption. I want to start uh, to, to make this country feel uncomfortable. Um, with, corru uh, with corruption. Uh, as it is, it's like it's now part of our lives, but it shouldn't be. So I really want to see to it that we, we Malawians start feeling uncomfortable um, about corruption. Meanwhile, the Human Rights Defenders Coalition says it will organize demonstrations on Tuesday next week to force the Public Appointments Committee of Parliament to confirm Jizuma as new anti corruption bureau boss. Following her rejection, Chizuma returns to her job as ombudsman. Mistaken beliefs surrounding the COVID pandemic have caused the life of a woman in Chiguma Township in Blantyre. The woman, Betha Kongwe, died as a result of complications she developed after giving birth at home. She is reported to have refused to, to go to hospital for fear of catching the coronavirus. Isaac Salima has the story. These are photographs that Grant Kongwe has banned to let Betha Kongwe has remained with. His wife is gone, gone for good. He is outraged and heartbroken. Memories of his wife are still prominent, more so as he will have to take the huge responsibility of raising four children, including the newly born baby left behind by the deceased. Betha died some days ago due to complications after delivering a baby boy at home. She is said to have been afraid of catching coronavirus and ended up delivering at home. She then started breeding until she was taken to Bangu Hepe Center where nurses had to call for an ambulance from the Blanta District Health Office. The ambulance that carried the woman unfortunately was caught in a traffic in Nilimbe. It had a fault siren and could not be given way to the hospital. As this was happening, the woman's condition 
was getting worse. She died minutes later after arriving at the hospital. Speaking from Makiringa village in Tenj area in Chigumwa, the deceased auntie Jennifer Gremes said the fear of catching the virus has cost the life of her ration. She was afraid of going to the hospital as rumors were reached that people were catching the virus at the hospital. I was even anxious of going to the hospital because of fear of getting the virus. The husband, Grant Kongwe, said he is devastated by the loss of his wife. The death has really hit me hard. The responsibility of taking care of the children is now in my hands. I'm really at pain. Blanta district medical officer Miriam Munyasuru said they did not have a hand on the death of the woman as she was taken to them when her condition had deteriorated. She has since called on pregnant women to always deliver at the hospital. I would say that if uh, the guardians brought this uh, woman on time, uh, at the hospital, we would have saved her life in the first place. The deceased has died at the age of 32 and has left four children. Mino, special advisor to the president on safe motherhood, Dorothy Ngoma, says research shows at least 60% of mothers and children have been shunning health facilities since the COVID pandemic began 10 months ago. Goma says the women have been shining the facilities out of fear of catching the virus. Sam Karimira reports from Mzuzu. Ngoma made the remarks in Mzuzu during a media interface of at least 20 journalists from various media houses in the northern region, though she could not provide details as to whether the misconceptions have led to an increase in home deliveries and born before arrivals she described the current scenario as worrisome. She then called upon members of the media to help in spreading objective messages to help clear the misconceptions. Some were saying, no, if you get the vaccine, uh, you will never get pregnant or have children. So there were a lot of those negative things that uh, people were sharing. Because of that negative information, we saw that the numbers of... Uh, 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 women or even people sick coming to the hospital reduced in some hospitals by 60 percent the hospitals really emptied Nzimba North acting district nursing officer Mese Banda admitted that issues of COVID-19 vaccine have brought misconception in his remarks, Niga Media Club chairperson Joseph Ebuare appealed to health personnel to treat journalists as partners and not enemies, claiming that in most cases, media face resistance in pursuing health-related stories. Currently, mortality rate is at 439 per 100,000 live births. President Lazarus Chagwira has reaffirmed the need for university graduates to use newly acquired knowledge and skills in the creation of a new Malawi. President Chagwira was speaking during a University of Livingstonia graduation ceremony in Zuzu on Tuesday. President Chagwira then said he is confident that the current crop of graduates is bold enough to create opportunities for others. Feston Marigezo reports. <laughs> Chawera said he is confident that the current crop of graduates is bold enough to be creators of opportunities for others. Chawera said what the graduates will do with the degrees will determine whether they will be part of the national development. The creation of a new Malawi calls on all college graduates to use their acquired knowledge and skills for the expansion of our nation's developmental and human capital. Anyone can use the education to analyze life's problems and pontificate about what someone else should be doing to solve them. In his remarks, Junior Vice Chancellor Reverend Timothy Nyasulu 
implored the government to consider introducing a special scheme that would allow students to buy education equipment such as laptops and smartphones tax-free. Nyasulu said this will ease access to education, stressing that country education is technology-driven due to COVID-19 pandemic. The such gadgets are not cheap, they're expensive, and they can only be done uh, access to students if the prices are uh, in a way subsidized or supported by the government. That's why we're asking if the government would come in to support those uh, students who are struggling to access the internet in terms of uh, virtual learning. One of the graduates is Patricia Msisha who has backed home with a diploma in registered nursing. My secret was that I was studying very hard, doing like uh, group discussions and there was good teamwork with my fellow students and again when I had problems I was able to go to the teachers to ask for guidance. At least 521 students have graduated with certificates, diplomas and degrees adding the total number of students that have graduated from the institution to 3033 since the first cohort in 2007. The High Court in Nilongwe has reserved a ruling on a bid to vacate an injunction restraining the government from relocating refugees to Tsarika refugee camp in Doha. Refugees and asylum seekers obtained the injunction following a government directive that they relocate to the refugee camp last month. Government, through the Office of the Attorney General, appeared in court on Tuesday to vacate the injunction, but High Court Judge Ruth Chinangwa reserved her ruling to a later date. Rebecca Chinjega is following up on the case and has more in this report, read by Matthews Kassanda. The state, through its representative Nevas Chisiza, applied for the vacation grant of leave for the injunction to commence judicial review. Chinangwa adjourned the matter to May 26 for her ruling. Lawyer representing the refugees and asylum seekers, Eric Salima, said in an interview that they would wait for the judgment. This comes as the refugees and asylum seekers. Lawmakers who interview. One thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From packets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. <laughs> all soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. Its reinvented formula with flaxseed oil boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex! Good health starts here. Tikolole Kungu wenje zila mainiti Ati ene mkuyambida 200 kwa chaka Kana kuposila pa menepo Muta ukaa mozi mwama milione ya muti ene mkikolole promotion Takatino nikolola Takatino nikolola Takatino nikolola Kuma muka wenje zila mainiti 100 kwa chaka Kana kuposila hapo Muta zandia ma bonus Oye mbida phone ni SMS Kana data Pompo pompo TNM, always with you.
Welcome back and still in the news, lawyer representing businessman Thompson Pinganjira in the judge bribery case. Patrice Sinkono has asked Justice Dorothy DiGabriero to recuse herself. Nkono says there are serious allegations of impropriety against Justice DiGabriero and the judge president of the High Court. Mpinganjira is back in court to start, to start defending himself in the case. Jameson Jauruga has the latest. Mpinganjira's lawyer, Patrice Sinkono, said he has recordings and transcripts of offers being made to Mr. Mpinganjira for the purposes of the trial. According to Mpinganjira, Justice Di Gabriel and Justice Kalimbera assured him of favorable ruling if he complied with the offer being made. He therefore said there's likelihood of bias, arguing that in any case criminal justice should not only be done, but must be seen to be done. We are not saying that those allegations are proven or that those allegations are true. And that's not what the law requires you to do. The law requires you to show that those allegations are credible and that a reasonable person looking at the whole thing objectively would think that there is some impropriety. If that is the case, then the court should seriously consider um, recusing. And um, so the principle of the law is that when once a judicial officer has been appointed, they should be allowed to go through to the end of the proceedings. Unless something comes up, for example, to suggest um, a reasonable likelihood that the judge uh, would be biased. Uh, and that's what we brought um, to the judge's attention. Um, so we asked her to recuse herself. Addressing the court state prosecutor, Rene Kimatemba, said the allegation of impropriety against Justice Di Gabriel and Judge President Sylvester Garembera are baseless and only aimed at delaying and derailing the trial. He says the people who claim to have been sent by the two judges to meet in Pinganjira may as well be fake as there is no affidavit in support of their claims. Matemba says this is a strategy employed by Pinganjira to derail the case saying he also made similar allegations against the Justices Mike Tembo, Hire Podani, and Redson Japindu. He says Justice Di Gabriel should not recuse herself from the case, saying doing so would lend credibility to the allegations which he described as wild and full of malice. Victor Juala explains. I think that uh, application is baseless, and um, we thought they would bring uh, evidence to prove the allegations, but they have failed, as we've seen, 